to assist the country and the people more broadly so that these kinds of shocks don't keep happening. And India has reacted really swiftly with an, an absolutely critical set of measures. The government of India has already supplied $16 million in humanitarian aid to Sri Lanka. It has exported 100,000 tons of organic fertilizer to try to help farmers save off future food shortages. And it has supplied $3.5 billion in lines of credits to the government of Sri Lanka as it attempts to steer its economy out of default and further collapse. Contrast this with the People's Republic of China, which has been an increasingly eager creditor of Sri Lankan governments since the mid-2000s. Indeed, over the past two decades, China became one of Sri Lanka's biggest creditors, offering often opaque loan deals at higher interest rates than other lenders, and financing a raft of headline-grabbing infrastructure projects with often questionable practical use for Sri Lankans, including a massive port that generated little income and was barely used by ships, an equally massive airport dubbed the emptiest in the world because it attracted so few passengers, and the country's tallest tower that was built as a tourist attraction, yet has never unfortunately opened to the public. Now that economic conditions have soured, Beijing has promised lines of credit and emergency loans. This is critical since Beijing is estimated to hold at least 15% of Sri Lanka's foreign debt. But calls to provide more significant relief have so far gone unanswered. And the biggest question of all is whether Beijing will restructure debt to the same extent as other bilateral creditors.